These are five things that you need to know. That's Constantina. I'm Bruce, and we are your personal low expectation setter. Today, we are talking about a few things in the Disney world, UTM world, Universal, some things that we think you should know but should have extremely low expectations on. All right, kicking things off, number one, Tiara Topped Water Tower coming soon to Tiana's Bayou Adventure at Magic Kingdom. Everyone should know or probably already heard about the new attraction that's happening in the Magic Kingdom. There's a restaurant coming, which I'm really excited about. And then this t water tower is coming to the kingdom as well. So it looks pretty neat. Why is having a water tower important? Is it just like a symbol of the area or is it something that was in the movie? That would have been good to know if I did a little research before we started pre <laughs> pre pressing record. <laughs> Low expectations on this, right? Construction on Tiana's Bio Adventure continues to, to, shape, to take shape. And later this summer, a tiara topped water tower with Tiana Foods logo will make its way to Magic Kingdom. I know that a lot of people are bummed about Splash Mountain leaving because it's in, in a, an original, well, not original, but it's one that everybody's familiar with. But I'm kind of excited about this new thing. I think this is going to be good because a lot of the younger generation of kids don't really understand what Splash Mountain is. Right, true. And Tiana's my favorite princess, so I'm excited. I am all into this theme coming to the Magic Kingdom. Obviously, beignets for days. So beignets for <laughs> days, hopefully, shirt available. Hopefully, there's some beignets happening I would be super happy if, if it was allowed to be eating beignets while you ride. Don't think that's going to happen. But anyway, this water tower seems to be like a symbol of the area, which I think is neat. And it kind of sets the kind of whole uh, theme of the, I think, of the place. It almost is like that old uh, Hollywood Studios water tower, the MGM water tower they yeah. had. It mm -hmm. kind of reminds you of that. And I know our kids are pumped. They love Tiana and they love the Princess and the Frog. And they're very excited for the restaurant, the new ride. They're excited for all of that. All right, next item is the highly anticipated Toy Story Barbecue is officially opening March 23rd in Hollywood Studios. First of all, what, why aren't we invited to any of this? Why not? Low expectations. I I'm, I expect to not get invited, but I would like to get one invitation somewhere, some way. It's barbecue, not pizza, to be fair. So maybe that's why you're not necessarily a barbecue oh, that's right. snob. But I think this is exciting. I just want to see more in Toy Story Land area. I think that having another place to dine is not only crucial for Hollywood Studios in general because there's not a lot of places, in my opinion, to eat. I mean, obviously you have the sci-fi dine and theater in the 50s, which I love, but it's not necessarily the park you think about for food. Definitely not. It's probably the least thought about food park right. when it comes to Disney World. You know, Epcot obviously is number one, Magic Kingdom. Animal Kingdom probably second with the unique items they have there. And yeah. Hollywood Studios is dead last when it comes to food items. And you know what? We were just recently in Disney World and Hollywood Studios. And where this is located, I think it's going to do a good job of maybe, or it could do a terrible job, low expectations, <laughs> yeah. of eliminating some of that pressure of people inside of Toy Story Land. Exactly. I think that's what it's definitely needed. This is Roundup Rodeo Barbecue. And again, an opening March 23rd. It's going to be a table service family style restaurant serving barbecue inspired meals. It looks actually pretty cool. There's some pictures online and we'll probably have them overlaying this video, but there's some pictures online of the inside of this restaurant. It looks very cool. It looks almost like, you know what it reminds me of? It reminds me a little bit of a uh, a rainforest cafe where it's really, really well themed for kids, but not too dark where it's going to scare them. And hopefully the food is good. <laughs> I yeah. really love a good themed rainforest cafe, but I know it's not everyone's favorite. I just love theme. To me, I can have mediocre food and have a great experience as long as the theme is top notch. I can't do both. I can't have mediocre food and a mediocre atmosphere. Yeah. And I don't know if barbecue is you know, pizza is kind of hard to do well. I wonder if barbecue is hard to do well, too. There's probably some barbecue connoisseurs out there that are going to be like, oh, barbecue again? How can we have barbecue? They Disney can't do barbecue well. But we'll see what happens because this is going to be one of those restaurants that a lot of people are going to visit for sure. Yeah, and right now we know it's fixed price menu items will cost $45 per adult, 25 per child. But who knows? That might change. Which is not that bad. I mean, I don't want to give Disney any credit for That's pricing, but Ohana and... 
Space 220 are very pricey. So that price point for a restaurant like this is pretty reasonable, I guess. And again, that's why I I would say things may change because with Disney, that's the one thing you can always guarantee is change is happening. What's a good starting point, though, to have it at that? It's not $60 per person. Well, it's not open yet. That's true. So low expectations. Again, that's why I'm saying it We are your personal low expectation (laughs) setter. So I just ruined that. Number three. Okay, this is really interesting, I think. The 99 best and worst tourist attractions in the world for 2023. This was a list created. And I'm really excited to share this list because I'm seeing that Disneyland Paris actually made number two. And there's a bunch of others. Universal top the list. Epcot. There's a bunch we can go over here. I've never really been interested in visiting Disneyland Paris just because of the flight over there. But it's not that long a flight. I was doing a little bit of research, believe it or not. So your expectations were the flight was going to be super long, but it's not that bad. It's not that bad. It's almost, it's a couple more hours than going from where we are to California. Right. And number two on this list, that's pretty impressive. Although I wasn't sure exactly what number one was, which Mm -hmm. it says number one was the Hungarian Parliament building. Mm -hmm. And then I looked it up. That's pretty impressive. Yeah. But I don't know. This is a this is from Google reviewers and they're doing ratings to to kind of compile this list. It says Disneyland Paris scores seven point one seven and is the most popular attraction on TikTok with tagged posts being viewed at a staggering seven point nine billion times. Oh, it's from TikTok. Well, they're getting d- data from everywhere. Oh well, I have no TikTok has zero credibility for me when it comes to like people people's actual experience i feel sometimes tiktok is just what it really looks like not actually what it it is in person visiting it right so is this like people have gone there and been like you know what this is great disneyland paris is amazing or is it vis- very visually appealing for people well it's a bit of both right so this is from google reviews and this is how they compile the list and then of course they're looking at other social platforms to compile what they think is the top out of the list I don't know if I necessarily agree with you with the TikTok thing. That's kind of where all my focus has been lately. And I I am a very very visual person. So I think that it's great. And I think that it's, I I think it's, can be a source of information where maybe you wouldn't have found elsewhere, but I am impressed. It's funny. It's worth noting that the one thing that got the worst on the list was the Hollywood Walk of Fame in Los Angeles. They, it was named the worst major tourist attraction in the world for 2023. I concur. <laughs> yeah, it's not the best. I think that goes back to your philosophy, right? Is where you set your expectations and you see the Walk of Fame and probably all these older Hollywood movies thinking this is like the best place to visit. You got anybody that's anybody has to go here and they've made it. And when you actually visit, it's it's actually not the best. And no, the I would never. Area. I would never suggest anybody go visit the Hollywood Walk of Fame. <laughs> Photos on Google is just as good. Yeah, as we were visiting this place. This is not a place that I wanted to visit again. Just wasn't what it, it made it seem like. This was this grand celebration of of the Hollywood stars, and it's going to be a nice place to go visit. It's it's just in the downtown LA area. So if you go back to this list, you'll see all the rest of the items they listed at the top ninety nine, and it's goes all the way through so of course we mentioned disneyland paris but i thought it was interesting because you see universal on here number 20 is universal studios japan which is really interesting and number 25 disneyland park california made 25 walt disney world was pretty hold on far up there i just reading this list and going down because i was only reading the, the the left side it's in two columns 50 on the left 50 on the right and i was reading the left column first the top 50 and then i go over to the right one and it says Magic Kingdom Park, number 86. Do you know what's ahead of Magic Kingdom Park? Yeah. Universal Studios Orlando, Times Square, Disney's California Adventure, and Disney's Hollywood Studios. How can they have three of the Disney World parks ahead of Magic Kingdom? Yeah, that I thought was interesting. Although maybe there's a lot of diehard Disneylanders that that's the original park, so that's always going to come first. Or maybe it's just that there's a whole lot more people that go to Magic Kingdom. So the votes and the the reviews are just way greater on that one versus Hollywood Studios, Animal Kingdom, and Universal Studios. Epcot's on there is number 73. And then you have Disney Hollywood Studios 81, Universal Studios Orlando, 
82. How would you rank your four parks in Florida at this moment? I know it can change. Yeah. And we often talk about it changing. But if you had to rank your four parks right now, how would you rank them? So prop, I'm always going to be a Magic Kingdom girl and an Epcot girl. So those are my top two. Then I would say probably Universal Studios is having my heart a lot more lately than Hollywood Studios in Orlando. But it goes back and forth. Yeah, it depends I, on the day. <laughs> I, I agree. I think that Epcot for us has been kind of growing on that list. And I'm really excited to see what they come up with when they do release or finish all the construction in Epcot. I wonder if that's going to vastly improve that park in our opinion because right now even with the construction going on there we love it there it's still our top one or two yeah, yeah. definitely it's, you like you said epcot magic kingdom are the top two and then hollywood studios animal kingdom depending on how you're feeling and what kind of day it is right you can kind of tag along there and then universal studios and and islands of adventure is just a great park in my opinion like a, they've done i think a lot with their theming I think that they are celebrating movies still, which is really important to me and fun. So, I mean, that just screams my childhood. So that's really where I'm at. Whereas Hollywood Studios, Disney's Hollywood Studios kind of has been leaning again, away from that where they got rid of the great movie ride and the backlot tour. So I don't have that same feelings like I used to. And as well, although they do have, they still have the awesome Sunset Boulevard and that whole area with, the Tower of Terror. I will always love that. Yeah, Hollywood Studios has become a place where it used to be they show you how movies were made, and mm -hmm. now they're immersing you in the movie itself, like right. Toy Story Land, Galaxy's Edge. And you're more of, you like the history and to show us how the movies are made versus the actual be in the movie. And I'm sure, and I know that's not for everyone. Clearly, that's why they probably made changes, yeah. right? So that's fine, but that's just kind of how I've been feeling. All right, before we get into the next segment of this podcast that you're listening to today's show is brought to you by us utm tv and club utm we are doing episode number 400 monday if you're watching this show live monday it's going to be around the mid-march area 7 p.m eastern time you can sign up we're going to be recording it live inside of club utm you can sign up over at clubutm.co 400 episodes we've done so far of the podcast and it's been a pretty fun ride and we appreciate all of you joining us every single week. And somebody said we should do episode number 400 live from Disneyland Paris, which we couldn't get to. Yeah, that's unfortunate. <laughs> but we're going to do it live from our studios right here with you. So yeah. you can come ask your questions, hang out with us. Maybe it'll be like an hour or longer episode. So again, join us over at clubutm.co for episode number 400 of the Unlock of the Magic podcast. Okay, item number four of the five things you need to know. Indiana Jones and Disneyland reopens. Yay. There. Finally. Finally. It, really, it needed to reopen because that area was really, really congested without something else there. Yeah, and, and it's my favorite. I know everyone loves a good thrill ride, and it is a, quite a thrilling ride, right? In Disneyland, it's always fun. And like you said, it definitely alleviates some of the walkways and places that was congested before it reopened and now disney saying imagineering adds touches of new magic with two new projection scenes in this classic adventure land dark ride well the only thing i don't like there is projection scenes true i agree with you i don't know if you need too much for this attraction i think it's a good ride as is they saying that disneyland cleaned every skull mummy and snake during their three-month <laughs> <laughs> refurbishment I don't know why, but it felt much longer than three months. Maybe it's because we were there and really feeling the pressure of having all that area kind of closed off. It just felt longer than it needed. Well, to I be. think it closed right when we got there or yeah. soon before we got there. So it felt like it was closed already when we got there. And it's been a while since we've been. So I think the other thing, too, is, you know what? I'm going to hurt your feelings right now. Is that okay? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's fine. You're probably used to that by now. A little right? bit. I don't like dinosaur. Oh, so you're comparing it. Yeah. Okay. So I very much like Indiana Jones and I'm out on dinosaur. I, I've I'm decided not, the last time we went, I'm out on dinosaur. It's fine. I know that it's not everyone's favorite. In fact, a lot of people feel like you do. They skip it. It's not, they don't get it. They think it hurts. It, it's not necessarily enjoyable ride. It's a little jerky. I love it. I'm, I never knew how much I love dinosaurs. I don't know why, but to me, I love it. And but if you put it next to Indiana Jones, I can see, I mean, I'm also a diehard indie fan, right? right. So it, it is a challenge for me to like choose a favorite child, right? Indiana Jones Adventure, though, it's a great ride. Definitely. And I'm super pumped to go back to Disneyland now that we're magic key holders. And 
I cannot wait to go back to Adventureland and go on the Jungle Cruise, get one of those Dole Whips, and then go see Indiana Jones. Our additions to Indiana Jones Adventures adds touches of new magic that enhance its already established storyline. Imagineering executive director Kim Irvine said in a statement released by Disneyland. Maraton's guests even further and with a powerful electric-like energy and fernet- frenetic apparitions. What's that word? Frenetic? Why do they do that? Is this from Disney itself? <laughs> yeah. This what, is- Disney? Dumb it down for us, will you? <laughs> this force of Mara turns a possible passageway escape into a rubble of dust. So that's fun. <laughs> oh, Disney, you do a terrible job of describing these things. Like, no, that <laughs> Too doesn't, much. That doesn't make me, that makes me confused and not want to go. You got to write it like. I have to like, Google each word. <laughs> you got to write it like people talk in real life, not on your okay, like approved by corporate way. I think that these are fun. I think it might be a little bit of a word salad. That's what Disney does, right? But it's fun. I'm excited. Finally, it's open. I don't care too much about projections. I just love the ride itself. So I don't think it's good or bad. I love this queue too, by the way. Yeah, the queue is definitely better than Dinosaur. It's not only better than Dinosaur. Well, okay. We can argue back and forth about that. It is just as good as Dinosaur. But what it is in Disneyland is it's surprising, right? Because Disneyland- Because like, people jump out at you? Be, not because of that, but because Disneyland is so small, you don't expect a, such a large queue. So it really is j- jaw dropping when you walk in. It's pretty large and, and long. You, you're walking through the queue and you're thinking to yourself, where do they- st- where is this attraction? Is this attraction in Nevada? <laughs> like you're walking through this queue and you're walking down this long pa- uh, pathway and you you finally get there and it's deep in there. Right. Well, it's awe inspiring. Def- definitely. <laughs> I like it. I Listen, I agree with you. I think it's like most things in Disneyland. Disneyland does it right. Okay. Well, this last one might be something you will be really excited about because- Pizza? Yeah, there was a new restaurant, not specifically pizza, but pizza is is on the menu, and it's they're suggesting that it's one of their specialties because they have a great photo of some good looking pizza, in my opinion. So this is number five, Summer House on the Lake, opens later this year at Disney Springs, and this rendering of the restaurant itself very kind of has like a modern flair to it. It it says Summer House on the Lake embodies a beachy, breezy house vibe that will pair perfectly with sweeping views of Lake Buena Vista. You tagged me. I think they posted something on Facebook and you tagged me there and had a picture of a pizza. And I have yeah. to say, visually, just obviously I didn't eat the pizza yet, mm-hmm. but by the looks of it, it looked okay. Yeah. It you says know, I'm going to have low expectations, but I will definitely... You know, uh, I will definitely be going in there to check it out and let you know what I think. They're saying it's California-inspired menu featuring simple, sustainable ingredients from pizza and pasta to salads and sandwiches. Now, when I think of great pizza, I think of simple dough recipes, not a lot of preservatives and things that gunk it up. So pretty much anything, the total opposite of Pizza Planet. Total opposite. So when you think of good pizza, here's what you do. You think of Pizza Planet, and how do I make it the complete opposite of Pizza Planet? That's good pizza. And I I truly hope that it comes out well because we know we need some good pizza, some pizza that doesn't make you feel horrible in Walt Disney World. Uh, Speaking of good pizza, I have an announcement to make. What's that? I am running for office. Okay. I'm running for the office of CPO. Okay. Chief Pizza Officer of Disney. (laughs) That's awesome. If you want to vote for me. For Follow sure. me on Facebook. I'm running for office. I'm going to try to get Bob Iger to change the recipe of Pizza Planet. We need the team together in order to do this. Just better ingredients, right? Just it's it's sometimes you need that that kind of pizza where it's it's Well, hold on, cuz okay. you can take the ingredients. I can give 10 people the same ingredients and it's all about how the procedure is. Right. In order to come out. But so imitation they may be te- they, cheese is bad. Correct. Right? So if they're doing that or... Are they using imitation? You just hurt my feelings even more. I don't know. It doesn't... Wouldn't surprise me just by the looks of it, but in the way I feel when I'm done eating it, you know, everybody likes a good cheap pizza. There's all, you know, Italian, artisan pizza, and then there's like that kind of crappy pizza that it's like goes back to your childhood cafeteria days, which sometimes you need, right? But when I'm in the parks, I certainly don't want to feel awful after eating it. And that's the reason why I really just avoid Pizza Planet. And that's how why I avoid. You avoid just. I can't be seen in Pizza Planet. <laughs> that's the why I avoid it. I can't. I can't legitimately be seen in there after yeah. all of this thing. But here's the deal. Okay. Bob Iger is only on Twitter. He doesn't have Instagram. I don't think he's on Facebook. So here's what you got to do: tag me and Bob 
Bobby, as I call him, on Instagram. Bob okay. Iger. He did like one of our tweets that say about Pizza Planet changing its pizza. I really want, I'll do it for free. I don't okay. even have to pay me. I That's just want to go in there and get good pizza when I go to Disneyland. <laughs> okay. It's fine. I'm sure that will be a free pay, free position. Uh, no, a non-paid position anyways. I'll do it for free. I'll do it for <laughs> okay. the love of pizza. All right. For the love of pizza, let's get Bruce as CPO. That's right. So All to right. recap, there's a lot of things coming to Disney. Number one is? A lot of things. I lots lost, of things. I lost the list. <laughs> Low expectations on this show right here, but number one is? Tower, tower. I don't even have it in front of me, but the tower, Tiana's tower. Number two, let's see if my memory serves me right. Number two would be the rodeo restaurant. Yes, barbecue that- coming to, new barbecue restaurant right. coming to, uh, which we won't get invited to, and we won't be able to share what's happening there until like a couple months later as usual. Low expectations. Number three, best and worst list. I finally pulled up the uh, the, the show notes here. The list of attract tourist attractions in the world. Number four, Indiana Jones. And Which then, you're most excited about. Out of these five things that we talked about today, is Indiana Jones the most exciting for you? Yeah, I would say. I'm, I'm, I, it, there definitely felt like something was missing when we were in Disneyland this time. Yeah. And I actually think that's why the kids that were with us, our kids, chose to go over to California Adventure more often definitely, than yeah, I, I thought they would. Because there was just something, I mean, with anything, Toontown not being open to definitely seemed like. But I'm excited. And number five, Disney's trying to bring pizza again to, yeah. to good pizza. I don't know if I'm excited about this one only because it's in Disney Springs. I know it's not your favorite, easiest access place to get to. True. So it can be a little bit of a challenge, but I'm excited. You know what I we were talking about? We went to Disney Springs last time, and I think where you park is helpful. You have to know where you're going. You have to know what kind of person you are. If you're an extreme introvert, you definitely want to take some tips and advice on where to navigate Disney Springs. If you if you love nightlife and you're an extrovert, it, it won't matter. Because you like people. Because you like people. And there's just lots of people like there. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, you like activity. You love shopping. It doesn't matter. It's a great place. But if you're more of an introvert, you can still enjoy Disney Springs. Have a really good time. We just maybe we can do something about. An, I know we've done an introvert's guide to Disney. Maybe we should do it just specifically an introvert's guide to Disney Springs because. Don't forget, I really love Disney Springs. I can do that right now. Okay. Here's the introvert's guide to Disney Springs. Yeah. Go to Epcot. Okay. Moving on. All right. Follow us on Instagram, Unlocking the Magic Podcast. All the show notes for this will be over at unlockingthemagic.com. If you want to use Unlocking the Magic Travel, you can do that as well. Hit that subscribe button, and I think that's going to do it for this episode. Yep, that's going to do it. See you next time, everybody.